Welcome back. This is part four of our adventure building a virtual pinball machine. Today we'll be drilling holes for all the buttons. And I'll try to explain my choices regarding their placement after learning some lessons with our current pinball machine. Let's get started. We start by marking where the launch ball button will go. I've decided to use a button rather than a plunger for a couple of reasons. First, it's more widely compatible with more virtual pinball games. Second, it's more budget friendly. And third, because of space restraints in the size pinball cabinet we're building. So we marked it up, two and three quarter inches in and three and three quarter inches down. Then drilled the hole with a one inch Fortzner bit. Then it's on to marking the rest of the buttons. We begin with the start button at again two and three quarter inches in and three and three quarter inches down. Followed by the remaining left side buttons. I'll explain what they're for. The second button down is a magna save button. I don't really know what it's for, but I'm sure the diehards do. I know there are only a few pinball tables that use it, so I decided to put it out of the way a little. The third button down will be an auxiliary button. Not really used for any specific purpose at this time, but I'll find something I'm sure. The last button is the exit button, used to exit a pinball table when you're done playing. Before we get to that almost mistake made here, let's drill the start button hole. And test out the fit. Nice. After that, we decide the original marks we made are too close together and need to be changed. And then we realize that those buttons will be too close to the leg bracket and need to be moved. We settled on four inches in and seven, 10, and 13 inches down. With everything marked, we drilled all the holes. And tried to dry fit the buttons, realizing pretty quickly we forgot to switch to the one and an eighth inch drill bit since these buttons are a little bigger. Whoops. So now the dilemma is how to keep the holes straight while making them bigger, which everyone knows can be a huge challenge. So I used a scrap piece of wood clamped to the front of the cabinet then drew out the exact measurements on it. Then slowly and carefully drilled the holes, going slow to make sure I didn't chew up the already drilled holes. After that, I removed the scrap piece and cleaned out the widened holes a little. Crisis averted. We then proceed to dry fit the buttons. With that done, we still needed to add a forward nudge button to the front. I decided to use nudge buttons rather than a nudge sensor inside the cabinet. Again, for compatibility, simplicity, and cost. For symmetry, we went with 4 inches in and 10 inches down to line up with a button on the other side. Then, out of some scrap, I made a mount for 4 service buttons on the inside of the cabinet. They will be the same buttons that I used on the outside, but they're used solely for service related settings on the pinball tables. And finally, we added the flipper and nudge button holes to the side. The drill bit was getting pretty dull at this point, and it was a pain to use. And that's it. Repeat for the other side. 
Anyway, that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next video, where I make a completely wrong TV mount shelf thingy for who knows what reason. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to keep up to date with this project.